All right, brothers, time to get back at this project here. As you saw in the last one, we got everything torn apart, mostly. We still have a little bit going on here. Motor's kind of sprawled out all over the place. So the idea of today's project is to get everything disassembled. I still have the cans, springs, and valves in the head still. I want to take these pistons off. I'm basically getting everything ready to be cleaned. So this box here is called a hot tank. It has a caustic material opposite of an acid. And anything that's steel I can put in here, it's heated. And it will take all the oil, carbon, paint. It pretty much just chews up everything so that I can just basically hose it down when I'm done and it's pretty damn clean. Obviously, it's not gonna get it totally clean for final assembly, but it gets me really close so that all I have to do is just do a soap up when I'm ready to assemble and that. But anything that's aluminum, I cannot put in this hot tank. Anything that's aluminum, you can put it in for a few minutes, but then it'll actually start eating and dissolving the aluminum. So anything that has that, I gotta, I'm gonna take a little magnet and just go around, just double check, make sure the things that I'm putting in there are in fact just steel parts. Otherwise I won't have them when I go back in a couple days. So they'll sit in there for a few days and marinate. And then probably it's Saturday, probably like Monday morning or something, I'll start pulling it all off and just hose it off as I pull it out. First, I'm gonna start working on these pistons. I gotta get the heads, the pistons off the rods. So with these style, they have these little clip rings in here and I can stick a screwdriver in these little cutouts and peel them, peel them away. I'll show you that in a second here. All right, I already pulled one of these pistons off just to see how it was. They're pretty simple, you just get in here with a screwdriver, like I was saying, walk it up then walk it around. Be careful to not fling it, because I did the last one. And these are actually, these wrist pins are actually not pressed in to the rods. As you can see, it's already fallen out. There you go. And then just make sure you get the other one, the other snap ring out, the other side. Although I'm not gonna be using these pistons, so really I don't have to get this out, so forget it. <laughs> now that I got all the pistons and bearings out of these things, I will be reusing these rods since they are still a pretty heavy duty rod and I'm not gonna be making obnoxious amounts of power. So I'm gonna be using these rods, putting new pistons on them. And so I'm gonna throw these in the hot tank. Now the next thing is these ballast shafts. These are identical as far as where you can see the keyway and where the weights are. So there's no worry about where those go. The thing that dictates what side is actually the sprocket. Uh, once this cleans up, you'll actually be able to see the lettering, but it's really hard with camera. You can see the arrow and it is labeled intake and exhaust, so I don't have to worry about mixing those up. But the only thing I had to take off were these, because these are aluminum, they will get tore up. But the bounce shafts, I'm not gonna worry about cleaning because I am gonna be cutting them or eliminating them, depending on which way I go. Look at this slimy oil pan. I took the windage tray off and look at all the sludge on the bottom of this thing. My goodness. Somebody wasn't up on their oil changes. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens when you get a ton of blow by and some cracked piston rings and all the combustion's just coming into the crankcase. Nasty. All right, so I'm a little confused. I just pulled the pickup off the bottom of the oil pan and found uh, this wedged in there. I put it back in there, but it was definitely in there when I just pulled it out. I'm not exactly what it's for yet. I'm sure I'll figure that out as I pull more apart, but it doesn't look good. It's a good thing I'm rebuilding this. <laughs> Found out where that piece came from that was in my pickup. If you can see this, see how they got that outer ring on the sprocket? As half of it's missing. But it went right in there, so that's my problem. All right, so I'm pulling this reluctor off the crank. It is a T, what was it? One of them got dogged up, so I had to use an impact driver. It helps out when getting it right. And it is a T30 to take these off, same as the oil pan windage tray. And this reluctor wheel has three bolts. It only goes on one way, so you don't need to keep track of how it came off. But uh, I just want to pull this off when I'm moving around, because if I bend this thing, I don't want to replace it. So. Taking that off, now I'm ready to throw this thing in the hot tank too. That's the next thing, we're gonna be pulling this head apart, just making it a naked head, pulling the cams out, springs, valves, all that good stuff, so you can get a good cleanup of everything on this. So 
So when it comes to these caps, got to make sure they go back in the right location, just like the main cap. Well, with main caps on this, it doesn't matter because it's a girdle. But you see how it has one, two, three. Now on the intake side, it's not one, two, three. It's six. That one you can't see, but there is a seven on there and eight. So it starts at the exhaust side where it starts at one and goes to five and then starts at six and goes to 10 over here. These rear caps for the cams, the exhaust one is labeled exhaust, you can see. The other one's not labeled at all, but it's easy to see which one goes to where. And then the one that actually has a cam sensor on it goes on the exhaust as well. But yeah, that's just a way to keep track so you don't misplace them when it goes back to assembly. All right, so there's no obvious distinction that I'm seeing right now as far as uh, intake and exhaust camshafts, except for there are different numbers, but unless I write them down or have them documented, that's not really gonna help me. The only thing I could do is, or the thing that makes sense to me at this point, is you have the caps one through five on the exhaust side. Yeah. So you figure that's like the first half, and then the six through 10 is the second half, and the intake cam has a B stamped on it right here. So in my mind, that'll make sense for me because it'll be the B side as opposed to one through five and six through 10. So that's how I'm gonna distinguish it. I'm gonna write these down too as well, just to keep track of it all. But yeah, there's no obvious where you can just take it out and throw it back in. So before you do it, just make sure you know which ones you're taking out where. Ooh, this one's jammed up in there. There we go. Little oil suction. Thing doesn't want to come out of the board. There we go. Now that we got the the lifters and the cam and all that stuff off, now we're gonna do the valve springs. The way I do this is just to break loose these keys on top of the retainers. I'm gonna take a socket and a hammer, kind of just jostle them to shake them loose. If you hit them hard enough, it'll actually break the keys loose and the whole thing will come off. But then uh, the keys will be flying everywhere. You'll have to go find them or get new ones, which I probably will be getting new ones. But also, you know, you just don't want stuff flying across the shop. And then the problem with just using a spring compressor is if you use it traditionally, let me close here. You see, this top can't get on the spring because it's so far down, it'll actually hit this journal here. So what we did for this one Mini Cooper we built is we made this so that we can stand off the top and then cut a window out so we could get the keys in and out. So I'm just gonna reuse that tool that we had to work on this one. Talking about nibbling loaded down? Nibbling down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of small block Chevrolets, these guys are doing one over there right now. Okay. Yeah, look. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, so now I'm able to compress that with this new one. Get the keys. And then I get in there. There's one. Sometimes it's hard to get that second one. one. Here, let me get a small one. So I got it. Did you? Cool. Look at that. Retrieval expert. <laughs> <laughs> so these springs I'm not going to reuse, so I'm not going to clean them up with anything. But I am. Too soft? Yeah. Just want to make sure we get the heavy duty stuff in there. Look at it. Yeah, you see that? He's just pushing down with his finger. Hang on. This is the, the Vulcan grip, but. Yeah. <laughs> the Vulcan grip. Not be confused with Goblin Toast. Look at the difference there between a small block Chevy valve and a Kobo LSJ, dude. Same motor, essentially. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Just half the size. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, here. Intake side. Yeah. This exhaust. It's still. Exhaust. Yeah, put that down there. Let's see. Yeah, put Let's that see that way in there. That's a real size. That's a real performance right there, boys. Oh my god. That's a real valve, right? <laughs> clean too. I wonder who cleaned those. Alright, so 
So we finally got an empty head here. Just gotta get the valve seals off, but that's not a big deal. Then the, uh, see how these seats look. I haven't even looked at them yet. Dunking in. I just gotta put my cans in there somehow. is under the tarp. Here we are, coming to pick up. I'll take her home with us. Do a little work. She needs a little TLC. So I just got a little preliminary wash on the pan. I still get to do the valve cover and the front cover. Did the head some too. It's hard to really get a brush in there, but at least I got some of it out. Once I take it to the machine shop, we'll throw it in their scuba tank so it gets really clean, but just wanted to clean it up so it's not so nasty to handle and whatnot. But uh, yeah, so that's all for today, guys. Hope that was some good information for you, showing you breaking down some of the pieces of the engine there and cleaning it up. I still have some stuff to clean up. The next thing we'll probably be doing is just making sure that the crank is okay and that the cylinders in the block are all right so that we don't have to resleeve it because uh, just because of the fact that that piston cracked, want to make sure that it didn't gouge the bore because it doesn't look bad, but it may have actually hollowed, ovaled it out a little bit. And just got to make sure that it's still okay and that it won't be an issue when we put it back together. And so we'll just be double checking a lot of this stuff and getting uh, ready for what kind of build we're going to be doing here. So check you brothers later.